Hello and welcome to our Disney News Hour. I'm Solomon Danye. Thanks for joining me. The House of People's Representatives in its sixth year, 16th regular session, has unanimously approved the military cooperation agreement Ethiopia had signed with the governments of France and Italy. The House deliberated on the significance of the agreements based on detailed presentations tabled by the Defence State Minister Gitacho Hailamara and the Foreign Affairs State Minister Bertuka Nayano. The Parliament has also discussed the 2019-20 audit report of several public institutions being tabled by the Office of the Federal Auditor General. The National Electoral Board of Ethiopia announces that it has received the results of 618 out of 942 constituencies. The board started to announce partial results of the elections on Tuesday. Board chairperson Burtuka Medex on the occasion said various political parties had lodged complaints in 160 constituencies and the board is investigating to come up with the solutions in the coming couple of days. Some of the complaints had not been filled in an organized manner and that the parties had been called upon to rectify the situation. The board is prepared to provide legal support to the parties' grievances. Starting from tomorrow, the board will work to respond in two or three days. If we will find anything that will change the outcome of the election, then those constances with irregularities will be obliged to rerun the election. My opinion, yes, Ethiopia has been generous throughout this uh, decade-long negotiation. Uh, I do believe in principle uh, Ethiopia has the right, it's a sovereign country, and has the right to develop itself using its own share of water that originates in its own territory. Because they are still holding their uh, colonia. I think that fear, two points, it, it shows exactly who Egypt and Ethiopia is. Historically, one is relying on the Pan-Africanism uh, Pan value. The other one is uh, showing Egypt, Africa for Egypt, it has been always the last source. They always, their politics is, it's either nationalism or Pan-Arabism. Founder and director of uh, the leading Pan-African communications consultancy, APO Group, Nicholas Pomping, called for intensified efforts to fully capacitate African national media for the well-being of the continent. Nicholas exclusively told it in English that media has the power to change the old narrative of uh, Africa. Alulat Klemarem reports. APO Group is the leading Pan-African communications consultancy. Established in 2007, the company said it has been assisting private and public organizations in sharpening their reputation and increasing their brand equity in target countries. The rising influence of international media organizations in the African continent seems to be a concern to the prominent lawyer and media expert Nicolas Pomping. That's, by the way, the, the, the issue we have as a continent. We, we, we are receiving all those international media. Uh, I do not see a, 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 a reaction uh, uh, which is, uh, which is at, at the level it should be. I mean, again, uh, media are important. Uh, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe for some people it's, it's when, when the, the, the media landscape will be, uh, will be so poor that you won't be able to rely on, on, on it that you that people will realize what they have lost and how important it was maybe it's one of those things when you don't you, you have to you have to lose it to realize how important it was maybe for some people but i mean media media escape a, a, a healthy media escape is extremely important for governance for, for democracy for development for uh, for health we we, we mentioned that for for who etc so uh, so we cannot just uh, uh witness that and, and just wait uh, for the uh, 
uh, international land to take over. And, and, I'm, and I also mentioned that, that question about sovereignty. It's a, it's a huge problem on its own. I mean, and for instance, government should see that. Uh, even even with their uh, even if they are only focusing on, on their own uh, uh, you know uh, interests, they should see that well. Uh, it's not good for them if the international media are making are making shaping the opinion in their country. Talking to ETV, Nicolas highlighted what the APO group and the Getty image agreed to change their wrong narrative of Africa. Basically, make more and more and more and more content, both uh, image. Uh, press releases, but also video, in fact, because uh, Get Image also distribute video uh, about Africa available to the international media, so they can see the real, uh, the real uh, face of the continent. In other words, uh, the, the partnership between APO Group and Get Images is, is about changing the image of the African continent, uh, uh, one image and one press release at a time, if you wish. The chairperson further expressed the need to intensify efforts to rebuild the good image of Africa. I will be surprised a little bit. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, surprised by the image the international media are conveying about the African continent. They, they tend to uh, to display the continent as, uh, you know, uh, only uh, conflict and and, uh, and poverty and uh, and uh, and uh, you know those kind of uh, bad news. Uh, While in fact, as a journalist, uh, uh, we we know that, and I knew uh, back in 2007 when I created the company that uh, there were already very good news about the continent. Uh, it's just that. Uh, uh, um, those international media uh, never had the access to those information. So I've decided to, uh, to uh, um, 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 build that company really to change the narrative about the continent, to influence the narrative about the continent. And uh, I used a very simple uh, but efficient way, uh, which was to uh, make uh, good news, uh, neutral and good news available to the, uh, to the international media. The Ethiopian Ministry of Defense graduates the soldiers who've been receiving basic military trainings in one of its famous military training centers. According to the ministry, the newly graduated soldiers have been given a four-month rigorous training at Brusheleko Military Training Camp that makes them able to defend their country. Top military personnel were present at the graduation ceremony. The graduation came hours after the Ethiopian government declared a unilateral ceasefire in the state of Tigray. The Nile's main source, the Blue Nile, starts in Ethiopia at Lake Tana. The river flows towards Sudan and joins the river's other tributary at Sudan's capital Khartoum before heading downstream to Egypt. GERD is being built here on the border with Sudan near the Blue Nile source. The dam will catch water in its massive reservoir, whose surface area is larger than that of Greater London. Humble residents of the state of Oromia expressed readiness to extend their support to finalize the construction of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam project. The state of Amahara also collected more than 13 million bur over the past 10 months to support the construction of GERD. Talking to ETV, the residents call upon the general public to reaffirm commitment to finalize the mega project. Habtama Shagri tells us more. The overall construction of good has reached over 80% and activities are well in progress to undertake the second reserve filling activities. Talking to ETV, residents of Ambo of the state of Romia called upon the general public to restore peace and security activities so as to keep safe to the flagship project. Residents decided the second water filling activity of good is critical and the realization of the mega project is vital to enhance the nation's development. <laughs> The issue of the Apai River is a matter of existence for all Ethiopians. Everyone needs to stand together for the realization of good. We have to understand the value of our nation, and it's important to maintain peace. As a nation, we are financing to rally the second reserve of filling of good. These hopes bring better development in the nation. As an Ethiopian, I think no one can begin to give up on this objective. 
this, we have to execute the second filling of the dam. The state of Amhara collected more than 13 million birr over the past 10 months to realize the construction of good. Apart financing good, further efforts are well underway to undertake three settling activities to protect the good from unnecessary siltation. After the first water filling of good, there were active public mobilization activities. Youth, farmers, business community, among others, are financing to support the realization of good. This demonstrates the integrity of the Ethiopian people to finalize the construction of good. The negotiation between Ethiopia, Sudan and Egypt is in a deadlock. The three countries failed to strike a fair deal. Ethiopia chose African Union mediation over any external mediator, while Sudan and Egypt resort to the UNSC to internationalize the matter. Though Ethiopia respects the agreements it signed with the two, both have reportedly been breaching it. Sintayo Tamarat reports. While Ethiopia prefers the early trilateral negotiation over the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, Egypt and Sudan have been opting to the involvement of parties other than Africans and the African Union. President of US-based EPAC Global, a movement that advocates robust Ethiopia-America ties, says the Nile is an African river and disputes over this river shall be solved by Africans. Even if we insist on having somebody else to sit on the negotiating table, on the negotiating table, I believe the AU is the most relevant and logical observer because this is an African river and we are talking about uh, 10 different African countries in Northeast Africa and in Eastern Africa. Okay, so the most, the, logically the most relevant observer to this is the uh, African Union. Haimanot is skeptic that other mediators on guard than African nations may serve the interests of their friends. Uh, if you consider other parties like the US, uh, EU and the UN, they will always have their own self-interest when they come to the negotiating table. Trust me, they will not have Ethiopia's self-interest at heart. So when they come to the table, including the Arab League, they will have their own interests or the interests of their friends, okay? or powerful friends or strategically important friends. So for okay. this reason, I don't believe these parties we mentioned earlier, the US, the Europeans, or the Arab League will be impartial to these negotiations. When you look back in history, uh, these countries and these parties are always have a colonial, a transactional and imperialistic ambitions in Africa. So, in these negotiations, it is more than reasonable to think that they will have the same attitudes once again. So they will try to force and squeeze Ethiopia to agree to something that is not favorable to Ethiopia and Ethiopians. A Pan-Africanist researcher from the Netherlands says much as Ethiopia respects the agreement it signed with Sudan and Egypt, downstream countries are repeatedly breaching it. They uh, do have an agreement in 2015 with that uh, DOP, which uh, clearly stipulates that any issue between these three tripartite uh, countries should be resolved within them without any fourth party involvement. And as we have seen, uh, this was breached in 2019 by Egypt when they turned uh, to the U.S. Uh, Ethiopia innocently accepted uh, that and the uh, U.S. has uh, laid the negotiation. Actually, there were observers uh, from October uh, to February until Ethiopia walked out of that negotiation when they see the final uh, resolution, which is which only serves the interest of Egypt. Ethiopia is preparing to undertake the second phase failing of the Gurdi Reservoir in July.
አሰራሩ በጎንደር ከተማ ከሚገኙ ያብያተ መንግስታት ግብረ ህንጻዎች ጋር በጅጉ ይመሳሰላል እነዚህ የጎንደር ተከታታይ ነገስታት በኢትዮጵያ ዛሬም ድረስ የሚጎበኙ ድንቅ የታሪክ አሻራዎችን ጥለውልን አልፈዋል ከዛ መካከል አንዱ ይህ የጉዛራ ቤተ መንግስት ነው Welcome back. You're watching Addis News Hour. The Kenyan delegation led by Raila Odinga, African Union High Representative for Infrastructure Development, has visited the La the Bu station of the Ethiopia Djibouti railway line. During the visit, the delegation has been briefed on the operations and major achievements of the electrified standard gauge railway which connects Ethiopia with Djibouti. Ethiopia, South Sudan and Kenya have signed an agreement for the establishment of a steering committee for the Lapset Corridor project. The signing aims to deepen the cooperation among these three countries in the implementation of the project. On in business, Kenya says it is ready to attract massive cargo transport business from Ethiopia and other neighboring countries in Port Lamu. The country also finalized cargo evacuation roads from Lamu port to Ethiopia's border Moyali. Demis Mokra reports. This is the northern coastal area in Kenya where the country is constructing the Lamu port, which is the second port to Kenya next to Mombasa. Lamu Port is part of an ambitious transport corridor named Lapsit, which is believed to integrate Kenya, Ethiopia and South Sudan in different infrastructure projects. Ethiopia is dominantly using Port Djibouti for its external trade and it accounts for over 90% of the country's import and export items. But now Lamu Port is being constructed in Kenya and it is believed to add options in the port menu for Ethiopia. Ethiopian ambassador to Kenya, Malles Halem, upon visiting the Lamu port said, Ethiopia is currently working to diversify port access, and he mentioned Port Lamu as an excellent outlet to Ethiopia. You know, the ports that we, we use are, are, are uh, Djibouti, Port Sudan, and uh, probably in, 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 in near future, ports of that belongs to uh, Eritrea. They have their own proximity to different parts of Ethiopia. If you want to bring producers from south, south, western, southeastern part of Ethiopia, Lamu is an ideal, an ideal choice. The, 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 the devil is in the details, of course. But uh, as far as Ethiopia is concerned, we need many port alternatives. And the Lapset will come up with the Lamu project, which is a best case in point. Port Lamu will have 32 berths when it gets fully constructed, but now Kenya is working to realize the first three berths only. Lamu Port General Manager Abdullahi Samatra said the first berth was already commenced and ready to attract bulky cargo transport business from Ethiopia and other neighboring countries. Uh, once we integrate with the business people in Ethiopia, they will have now, they will uh, welcome to come and uh, participate in using this port and will provide uh, efficient services that are reassuring the people of Ethiopia and also to secure their, their cargo through the port of Lamu. Port of Lamu basically is now uh, ready. We should expect by the end of the year to really commission it and we are also planning to bring in the equipment that is required for the operations. 
Kenya is currently building Lapsit road links to connect Port Lam with Ethiopia. Lapsit project regional manager Salim Bunu said the cargo evacuation route from Port Lam to Ethiopia border Moyale is being done and becoming ready for cargo evacuation in the near future. We have a very good road network. The government of Kenya has really committed itself to make sure this project really take off and uh, it is very serious about this project. So as Kenyan government, the infrastructure has really improved and we are very much ready for business to this port of Lamu. All the cargo evacuation route is ready. The security network is very ready. There is a lot of improvement in security. There are security camps all, all over the corridor so that the flow of goods and the flow of human beings is non-interrupted. So we are very much ready for, for business. We welcome the Ethiopian businessmen and the Ethiopian government to start using Lamu port and use this good infrastructure that is ready. In the northern part of Kenya, right here at the offshore of Indian Ocean, Kenya is constructing one of its deep sea ports. The first phase of this project was partially completed and it was inaugurated in the presence of Kenya President Uru Kenyatta. This Lamu port is believed to foster Ethiopia's import and export in the years to come, on top of Djibouti and other port alternatives. Reporting to ETV, Demis Mercurial, Lamu, Kenya. This city is the city of the most industrious people. This is the city of hardworking people. A typical Abaman is a wise man. When trade and commerce, this is the city. This is ABA, and this is me, Rough Cornwall, by telling you about my city. This is Addis News Hour. The Communist Party of China honored its outstanding members ahead of its anniversary on July 1. Speaking on the occasion, China's President Xi Jinping lauded outstanding members of the China Communist Party for their selfless contributions in the pursuit of national independence. Spokesperson of the Ethiopian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Dina Mufti, expressed best wish to the party on behalf of his country, recalling the lessons that Ethiopia drew from China and poverty elevation. Jerusalem Bethesda. China has presented a highest honor to party members who have made exceptional contribution to the party and country. 
Dressing the ceremony, China's President Xi Jinping praised the medal recipients for staying true the party's original aspirations and dedicating themselves to the people. Over the past 100 years, generations of CPC members have worked hard and made selfless contributions in the pursuit of national independence and the liberation of the people, as well as in striving for a prosperous and strong country and the people's well-being, said Xi Jinping. July 1st medal recipients are heroes coming from and deeply rooted in the people. They are ordinary heroes who are dedicated to their work without a complaint. Their deeds and spirits can be learned by others. They prove through concrete actions that every party member can make great contributions to national rejuvenation for the party and the people. With firm faith, strong will of striving and resilience, and taking actions at usual, critical and difficult times. Spokesperson to the Ethiopian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Dina Mufti, to his part said, China has contributed a lot on Ethiopia's effort in poverty elevation. I want to congratulate the people and the, the party, the ruling party, the Communist Party of China, for um, uh, attaining this huge growth, huge development which in fact emulates the rest of the world. We, my country, also learns a lot from the, what they have accomplished in areas, uh, especially in the areas of uh, poverty elevations, which has elevated millions of Chinese out of poverty on a regular basis, in the areas of uh, comprehensive development that actually, uh, you know, the trajectory that elevated China to this level, as you have said, from developing nations category to the level of the developed nations and uh, as a country with the second largest economy with the second most powerful nation on the planet earth they must be congratulated for this and the rest of the world the countries like ours have a lot to learn from them in the areas of reform which we are we are undertaking and uh, in the areas of um, as i have said poverty elevations in the areas of fighting corruption, uh, capacity building. A total of 29 CPC members who have made outstanding contributions to the party and the people received the honor, some posthumously. And finally, South Africa's top court on Tuesday handed former President Jacob Zuma a 15 month jail term for contempt of court following his refusal to appear before graft investigators. The Constitutional Court can do nothing but conclude that Zuma is guilty of the crime of contempt of court, Judge Sisi Kampempe said. Sintayo Tamarat has more from Al Jazeera. South Africa's top court said it would rule on Tuesday whether ex-president Jacob Zuma, who snubbed an order by the Constitutional Court in January to testify before investigators, is guilty of contempt of court for refusing to appear before a graft panel. Accordingly, former South African president was found guilty of contempt of court and sentenced to 15 months in jail by the country's top court. This came after he failed to appear before an inquiry investigating corruption during his time in office. A commission has been hearing allegations the wealthy Gupta family used its friendship with Zuma to win government contracts and influence policy. Mr. Zuma is no ordinary litigant. He is the former president of the Republic of South Africa who continues to wield significant political influence and in whom lies a great deal of power to incite others to similarly defy court orders. His actions and any consequences or lack thereof are being closely observed by the public. So if his conduct is met with impunity, he will do significant damage to the rule of law. The unique political position that Mr. Zuma enjoys as the former president constitutes a further exceptional feature of this matter that justifies a punitive sanction. The former South African president, who was forced to step down in 2018 over corruption scandals, is accused of enabling the stealing of state funds during his almost nine-year stay in office. It was Zuma himself under pressure over the scandal who set up the inquiry shortly before he was ousted by the ruling African National Congress, according to African News.
Jacob Zuma has testified only once in July 2019 before staging a walkout days later, accusing the commission's chair of bias. Other than a brief appearance in November where he left before questioning, he has ignored several invitations to show in court. Zuma has cited medical reasons and preparations for another corruption trial for his repeated no-shows. Before we go, a quick reminder of our top stories. National Electoral Board of Ethiopia starts announcing results. And Kenya's Lamu port ready to render cargo service to neighboring Ethiopia. Well, that's it for the news from Solomon Dang and the rest of the English team here in the studio. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.